off and running on a sloppy track edition of Aqueduct Insider, our opening Saturday card of this 2014 fall meet. We are glad you're with us. That's always the case. You've made it in time. Jason Blewett, Maggie Wolfendale alongside. Happy Breeders' Cup Day to everybody out there. Happy Breeders' Cup Day to you. The rain, the weather here on track, a bit of a bummer, but it's all good with the action we saw here and, of course, out on the West Coast. Yeah, we're living virtually here through uh, the eyes of Santa Anita, and they actually had rain overnight, but the track recovering very quickly. Some people were quick to jump on the bias, though the last two races that we've seen, uh, at least out there live, have been pretty fair. Indeed they were, but that wasn't the case the first few dirt races they ran on today's card, and certainly we got to get you, and we know if you're watching the show, you're certainly paying attention to the action at Santa Anita as well, but we can't start a an aqueduct inside our Breeders' Cup day without recapping what's already been done out on the West Coast. We've got a handful of races that were run earlier today. Stretch calls, in fact. We'll send it to Trevor Denman with the call of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies off the far turn. By three lengths, take charge, Bandy. Feathered is coming after them. Danette is running a huge one along the inside. Wanda Gal is in with a shot too. Homeward bound now, take charge, Brandy. Holding on gamely to this lead. Danette trying to sneak through at the rail. Feathered on the outside. A late run now from Top Dessel, but it's going to be take charge, Brandy. Take charge, Brandy, in a stunner. Take charge, Brandy. Top Dessel behind. Danette. Big speed and aggressive ride, and it all worked out for Victor Espinosa in the big. 61 to 1 long shot take charge brandy i mean she could have been a higher price than that to me here jay this is a filly who couldn't get past six furlongs and now all of a sudden she's able to stretch at speed to a mile and a 16th and really the three races prior to this one were all one on the front end and people were on the track bias the speed highway uh, bandwagon and, and very critical of the santa anita uh, track and how it was playing but it looks as though it's fared out like i said but take charge brandy i mean these connections you think of will take charge you know bittersweet with him retiring sure. but hey they got a breeders cup win. and beaten just a nose in their last breeders cup attempt with him in last yeah. year's five million dollar classic behind mucho macho man willis d horton paid uh, four hundred thirty five thousand for this two-year-old filly by giants causeway and what can you say d wayne lucas he'll take a shot even though he's a big price it sometimes works out most often it doesn't but 20 breeders cup wins and counting for d wayne by far record and 61 to one would take charge brand as we send it to the uh, call off the far turn of the Breeders' Cup Philly Amare Turf. And now Dank has let loose. Blue cap on the outside, wide open at the top of the lane. Day at the spa, hanging on to Peranda. Dank is trying to make headway. Secret gestures in there. Just the judge. Stephanie's kitten coming with a late run on the outside. But Day at the spa. Day at the spa is going on with it. Stephanie's kitten late. But it's Day at the spa. Perfectly ridden by Javier Castellano. Dictated it throughout. And Day at the spa wins it. Stephanie's kitten was second. It's the New York Red Philly by City Zip Man. Maggie, who stretches out beyond nine furlongs and goes the mile and a quarter in the Breeders' Cup Philly Amare Turf. Yeah, she did very successfully. And, uh, you know, that was Chad's plan. He was going to send her out on the lead, see how far she could take them. And she proved very game on the front end, holding off uh, the defending or trying to defend champion Dank, uh, last year's winner. And she was great. And a good day so far for the New York Reds with her winning. Wonder Gal was third in the previous race. So uh, Chad Brown racking up the Breeders' Cup, though. Three total. Of course, we'll get to his win with Bobby's Kitten, a go zapper kind of like run in the Breeders' Cup turf sprint. But for Chad, a big Saturday, a big Friday. Dank. Uh, the defending winner, as you noted, will be retired after her fourth place finish. And Chad Brown sweeping the exacto with Stephanie's kitten getting up for second as we get to the call and stretch run of the Philly Amare Sprint with Trevor Demon. He is running on from behind. They're at the top of the lane. Stone Tastic, the gray, tries to hold on. Lee Court, Judy the Beauty on the grandstand side, coming home gamely as well. And better lucky, but it's Judy the Beauty and better lucky, the two coming to dispute it now. Judy the Beauty sticks her neck out, goes for the wire on the outside. Better Lucky's catching. Better Lucky, Judy the Beauty. Judy the Beauty, one and a hit in a thriller. Judy the Beauty, Better Lucky just couldn't get it. It's a bit of retribution for Judy the Beauty, who was second behind Groupie Doll in this race a year ago. She digs in gamely and holds off the big long shot, Better Lucky. I thought Better Lucky, Lucky looked tremendous on the track. She's a very cool filly or mare that she can run on either surface. She ran very well last time, going long on the turf, uh, beaten by day at the spa. And we know that she's, go I think, going to be retired, or at least she's heading to the Fazek Tipton sale uh, this coming week. And we talked about it last night. Wesley Ward had been 0 for his first 16 in the Breeders' Cup. He's broke that.
that no? yesterday. Actually, <laughs> absolutely stayed down in Florida. I guess his son Tyler had a cross country meet. Somebody tweeted, yeah. "Well, is Tyler done running yet? Why isn't Wesley <laughs> back at Santa Anita today?" But it all worked out for Wesley Ward. Two Breeders' Cup wins and counting in BC 2014. A good job all around with a four-year-old filly or five-year-old mare, I should say, by Go Zapper. As we check out the stretch run, and it's a wild one of the Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint. Never cast for net shot. Gold cap on the outside. Ageless tight end dimension. Wide, wide open. No, nay, never getting the lead. Ageless on the outside. Tight end touchdown at the rail. Sweet swap running late. No, nay, never. Late run. Bobby's kitten. Bobby's kitten. Bobby's kitten like a rocket out of nowhere. Bobby's kitten. No, nay, never. They did hit it. From last off the quarter pole, Joel Rosario timed it perfectly. What a ride. What a finish from Bobby's kitten. And uh, Joel after the ride said midway through he wasn't sure if he was going to get there because Bobby's kitten was well out the back door running down the downhill course there at Santa Anita but now that you watch the race in retrospect and you focus in on him way back and wide and how fast he closed it was quite the performance and probably where Bobby's kitten should have should be all along. I know he's probably not a five and a half turf sprinter, right. but he's definitely that six to that seven furlong turf sprinter. He's the homebred by Kitten's Joy for the Ramseys. Chad Brown, Breeders' Cup win number three. As we tape this show, he's still got Bakken coming up in the Breeders' Cup sprint. Certainly the New York bred Zevo in the $5 million classic, and he gets his third on the uh, weekend out at Santa Anita. So we've got more coming from California here at the Big A, though. A dreary, gloomy, rainy day. The building was electric, though. The place was packed from before before the first race, a good amount of energy, and we were all on track to see what would shake out in our featured discovery. Bay of Plenty hustled out for the early lead. Noble Moon is down at the rail. Away game on the outside along with our caravan. They race into the clubhouse turn, and it's Bay of Plenty with the lead here over away game. Our caravan, Noble Moon, three alarm fire all right together. Then it's just called Kenny in sixth at a gap of four. Back to Pertonico, the trailer in seventh. The opening quarter was running 23 seconds. They've reached the back stretch, and Bay of Plenty will dictate the pace here. Bay of Plenty in front by almost a length. Away game, second by a head. Just call Kenny on the outside in third. Noble Moon is down at the rail and racing in fourth. Then it's our caravan. Three alarm fire. Moving up a bit now in between horses. And farther back, it's Protonico. Bay of Plenty, challenged by away game. The half was running 47 and two. Bay of Plenty by a head. Away game on the outside in second. Then comes Just Call Kenny in third. Noble Moon is down at the rail. Three alarm fire is fifth, but just three lengths from the lead. Then our caravan and Protonico, who begins to pick it up from the back of the pack. They're racing midway around the far turn. Bay of Plenty. Just Call Kenny is now the new challenger. Bay of Plenty, Just Call Kenny. Away game drops back, being passed by Protonico on the extreme outside. Protonico now up to third. The field is at the top of the stretch. It's Bay of Plenty. Protonico on the outside of Just Call Kenny. Bay of Plenty down at the rail. Just called Kenny in between horses. And Protonico on the outside. And here's Protonico now to take the lead with a 16th to the wire. Protonico with a last to first victory in the Discovery Handicap. Protonico by two and a half. Bay of Plenty held second over Just Call Kenny. The last of first victory, three to four wide for Protonico from the back of the pack. And it just showed how even and fair our track was playing here today. And Protonico relished the sloppy going. You know, Jay, he's a smaller type horse. You, the two second and third place finishers, who I thought ran well, are big, heavier types, and they're very talented. But when you got a sloppy track like this, I think it pays off to be small and light so you can just skip over this surface. Todd Pletcher's fourth career win in the Discovery, his first. I'll never forget it, a Wednesday opening day here in the fall meet of 2000 with left bank who would go on to be an eclipse award Very winner fast. and a champion older horse winning the tom fool and the whitney during his four-year-old season he was really a terrific runner todd of course out at santa anita joe bravo however full of mud got the job done and he caught up with maggie moments after the discovery here are the winning jockey of the Discovery. It's Joe Bravo aboard Protonico. And Joe, everybody looks good with mud on their face when they're smiling in the winner's circle. But look as though Protonico loved it. Yeah, he really did. I think he could have handled any type of surface. Uh, bottom line, don't you love Todd Pletcher? Huh? Yes, he, he wins at a high percentage. <laughs> Todd knows how to get it done. I was just a passenger. Uh, this horse really, he had it underneath himself today. He was real relaxed about everything. And 
Turning for home, he was just playing through there. Yeah, it looks like though he relished it and he easily handled the two turns here. It was kind of a question mark of whether he really liked it, but today it was no question about it. And you two have two wins together. Can we keep it going, Todd? Todd, make sure you can you name me back. I want to keep winning with him, but uh, nah, he's pretty cool. And Todd says thanks. The horse is nice. Mag, I'm going to have to borrow your jacket because it's freezing in aqueducts, okay? I'm going to need a bigger jacket or something. How about we just run you back to the jocks room? Deal. All right, Joe, congratulations. And we were sure Joe did the about face 180, got back to the room, took a quick shower, and it was probably off to a nice restaurant for dinner after taking the discovery. Joe knows how to pick some restaurants, too, yeah, especially with that wind under his belt. I'm sure he's having a nice meal as we speak, hopefully watching the Breeders' Cup as well. Yeah, one of the elder statesmen in this jockey colony here at the Big A. I would imagine he'll ride over the winter down at Gulfstream Park, but picking up Matt Musicar as his agent has certainly helped. He's picked up a lot mm -hmm. of calls for some pretty big outfits, certainly none more powerful than the Todd Pletcher Barn. As we say goodbye, we're just getting underway, though. That's the good news. It's Breeders' Cup Day 2014, and Maggie and I are coming back on Aqueduct Insider. We are back on this Breeders' Cup Saturday at the Big A. Mother Nature, well, she just didn't spare us nice weather. Much the story throughout the fall at Belmont Park. No turf racing here at the Big A tomorrow afternoon as well. Sloppy all day as we get you back off the quarter pole. It's the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Far back, and here's Texas Red come from last out of nowhere now. And Texas Red and Kent DeSormo strike the front looking for a danger, but there simply isn't one. It is Texas Red just outclassing them. Look at this for an easy one in the Breeders' Cup. It's Texas Red and Kent DeSormo just handwritten. They won it about seven. Texas Red somehow Cop ADM came very, very late to be in a photo with upstart. It's Texas Red for the boys of Louisiana. Yeah. Keith DeSormo, Kent DeSormo, the two brothers teaming up for just a huge upset victory. And Kent's done well since moving his tack back out to California. And this was a big victory. And it kind of does flatter. And you're kind of remiss to not see American Pharaoh in this race because he crushed uh, Texas Red last time out. So uh, it's a, you know, it's a, a kind of bitter, bittersweet to see this horse win, um, I'm sure, especially for the Bob Baffert barn. But cool to see the brothers teaming up. Yeah, and you got to like that. A $17,000 yearling purchase by a fleet. Alex wins a $2 million Breeders' Cup race. Certainly going to be one of the favorites over the winter for the Kentucky Derby. Son of a fleet. Alex, Texas Red by a lot over Carpe Diem, who finished second, a well-beaten second for the Pletcher Barn at 9-5. to five, And Upstart ran third. And New York Breds are hanging tough. I love to see that, that our New York Bred crew is, is really running well out in California. And Carpe Diem, I wonder if it was more of a track like you saw here on the east coast and not so you know kind of kind to early speed mm -hmm. you might have been because he was running at the end and i think this is a horse that the further he goes the better he might get well if we get on to a group of grizzled veterans from the two million dollar stars of tomorrow to horses that are seven eight nine years old that run just about every two to four weeks and leave it all on the racetrack a uh, good group of 17 five claimers as we go back to race number two And they're off. Italian rules. Heads out for the early lead. Make a fortune is down at the rail. And now quick money moves up along with attractive ride. And on the extreme outside, it's upward. So four of them right together for the early lead. Make a fortune. Sits just in behind, racing in fifth. Then back 40. And tax player is the trailer in seventh. The opening quarter mile over the slop in 22 and four fifth seconds. Quick Money in front here as they race midway on the turn. Quick Money by a length. Attractive ride in second. Upward on the outside in third. Now make a fortune right alongside of Italian rules. Farther back, it's Tax Player and Back 40 as they come for the top of the stretch with Quick Money, the one to catch. An attractive ride giving chase in second. The half was running 46 and three-fifth seconds. Quick Money in front, attractive ride, make a fortune. Down at the rail is Italian Rules, extreme outside. Here comes Tax Player, Tax Player putting in a late run. Quick Money trying to hold off Tax Player. It's Quick Money, Tax Player on the outside. Look like tax player got there. Could be a big upset.
little over 1,100 feet from the quarter pole to the finish line on this Aqueduct main track. And boy, oh boy, was that evident here in deep stretch with Quick Money on the lead. Yeah, it didn't come up, come up quick enough here for Quick Money. He's one of the coolest older horses running. I remember I used to gallop him for Linda wow. Rice way back when, when I first came to New York when he, I think he was three. Uh, but just run down by tax player who relishes a very wet track. And if you were smart enough to go back and look at that and this horse's PPs, congratulations. Well, $36 winner for Taylor Rice, who lost her bug, the, by far this circuit's leading apprentice going back to last winter sure. through Belmont. Lost her bug, though, in Saratoga. Struggled a bit to find live business throughout the fall at Belmont, but she's gotten off to a pretty good start here at Aqueduct. Is that a trend that might continue? I think we will see her kind of continued success here at the Big A. This is where her career got launched uh, last year, and she had she rode several winners here, and I think with some of the guys obviously gone this weekend for the Breeders' Cup and also heading south then, I think she could be right up there top 10 of the Big A And riders. you know she's going to get some live mounts from her Aunt Linda Rice, sure. who's got a big string throughout the winter here in New York with horses that fit just about every conceivable division on the inner track. As we get you back, race number six, all eyes on pulling G's at one to five. American breaks sharply from the outside. Flag on the play. And down on the inside, pulling G's now moves up. Pulling G's up to challenge Perfect American. Pulling G's now takes the lead from Perfect American. Flatjack is on the move and into second. Perfect American now in third. And flag on the play runs in fourth to Aaron again on the outside in fifth. Then it's Nicholson and it's five lengths back to Tajri, who trails the field in seventh. The quarter, 22 and four over the wet going, pulling G's, the big favorite in front here by a half length. Flat Jack is in between horses and Perfect Americans on the outside in third. A gap of five, back to a Flag on the play and then Nicholson. They're coming for the head of the stretch and it's pulling G's with the lead over Flat Jack. Pulling G's in front by two. Flat Jack is second. Flag on the play is down at the rail. Uh, then it's Nicholson and Perfect American. All chasing, pulling G's, who's got a four-length lead and less than a sixteenth of the wire. It's the big favorite at one to two, pulling G's the winner. Flag on the play, up for second. Flat Jack was third, and Nicholson finished fourth. We learned a few years back with the mighty Zenyatta, John Sheriffs is not a guy that pushes his horses. He is very patient, and maybe that patience is paying off with pulling G's. Yeah, the four-year-old breaking his maiden in his second career start. His first one was very good, very fast, earning a 91 buyer speed figure against the talented and highly regarded Clark Kent four trainer Larry Jones. But pulling G's looks to be a horse with a bright future. Hopefully, he stays on the track. And John Sheriffs flying back here from California. California wow. yesterday, Jay, and he got two winners on the card. Yeah, absolutely. Won the uh, second race or third, third. race, which yep. was a maiden special weight for Phillies and Mares, a race you will see the stretch run uh, momentarily. Junior Alvarado with the winning ride on pulling G's. Good stuff. Good to have John with us on this chilly Saturday at the Big A's. We get you back to the Saturday six, and we can see what shook out. And Recanted has taken over the lead. Recanted clear by three. Then Grand Strand and Thunder Run, in spite of it all, and Straight Bite. Recanted has the lead. Recanted in front by three, with Thunder Run giving chase. But he's not going to catch. Recanted. Winner by two at the end. Thunder Run was second. Grand Strand third, in spite of it all. Finished first. Court appeal. Love that. The two of them in a muscle tussle here as they come through the stretch. Love that on the outside. Court appeal on the inside. They've got four lengths on Mumtazar in third. And now there's an eighth of a mile to the finish. Court appeal narrowly over Love That. Now court appeal by a length. Love That in second. Mumtazar is third. And it's court appeal to break her maiden over the off going. Love That was second. And Mumtazar finished mile at 49 seconds prove it all night narrowly over princes on the lake prove it all night princes on the lake on the outside is gold potion my one love has now come on and is gaining ground towards the rail less than an eighth of a mile to the finish here comes my one love up to take over my one love in front gold potion prove it all night right together second and third my one love a three-length winner and it was close for a second between 
Big long shot goal. Potliadian continues to lead here with Big Town giving chase on the outside and Big Town is closing in on Pleiadian. Pleiadian is all out, but here's Big Town who's moving willingly on the outside to now grab the lead. Big Town, Pleiadian continues to battle on, but it is Big Town with the lead. Pleiadian in second and Big Town will do it. Half length at the end. Pleiadian was second. Six lengths. Hi girl, Madison, court dancer on the outside. Say three Hail Marys, looks to rally down at the rail. Then it's Sharifa, here comes Say three Hail Marys. Court dancer is in second. Say three Hail Marys in front. Court dancer second, then Sharifa. And my girl, Madison. Say three Hail Marys comes up the inside under Dylan Davis to win it. Say three Hail Marys by three. Court dancer was second. And showed the half in 48 and two fifth seconds. Built in a day is third, and now they're in the stretch. And now Literata has taken over from Mary to Michael. It's Literata in front. Mary to Michael in second. Peach Lake is putting in a late run on the outside. They come down for the 16th pole. It's Literata with the lead. Peach Lake continues to gain, but Literata is going to win it here. Wins the sloppy finale by three and a half lengths. Peach Lake was second. Married to Michael, finished third. It went fast, but we're already four cards in, and that means we're going to break out on this opening Saturday of the fall. The jockey standings for the first time since we got over here from beautiful Belmont Park. As Maggie noted a few moments earlier, some of the bigger names have certainly spent the last few days out in sunny California. And with that in mind, it's Manny Franco atop the rider standing. You know, it's kind of like, duh. Uh, uh, Manny Franco, he is riding excellent. He was riding excellently before we came into the aqueduct. Unfortunately, you know, he's kind of the lower man on the totem pole as far as the younger up and coming riders are concerned. So he didn't have a ride in the Breeders' Cup, but he's been killing them here at the Big A. Yeah, 19 years all won't turn 20 until December. We can take a look at a few of the uh, claims. Three of them, in fact, at a couple of shakes out of race number two with those old pros that you had talked about. Quick money has been reclaimed by a handful of people several times. David Jacobson, Rudy Rodriguez, Michelle Nevin uh, have uh, and Linda Rice and Linda, yeah. have had this horse in their barn uh, on several different occasions. He's so cool. Uh, Italian rules, too. He's an old hard knocker as well. The nine-year-old cow bred. Maybe he didn't like the mud today. We're Hoping for a nicer day at the Big A tomorrow afternoon, a day we will preview after this final timeout. Back here at the Big A, it's getting dark early. Remember to set your clocks back one hour. I know we're in the digital age and most of the clocks reset themselves, but we get that extra hour of sleep, and I guess that's good down the line. You want to be rested and ready to go for that fall Aqueduct Handicapping Challenge here on the weekend of November 15th and 16th. That is a contest that annually sells out. Do not uh, dilly-dally around. Pay that $400 entry fee and come out and join us at the Big A. And again, 1221st post tomorrow, and we fall behind tonight. An extra hour of sleep with someone that's getting up and has to go out with the I first love, set at 5.30 a.m. Is day. this like the greatest night of the year? Yes, pretty much. Uh, especially, you know, usually I don't have to work on Sundays, but we flopped it around because of the inclement weather, and I'll be loving that extra hour as I lay in bed. All right, you deserve it. A good job tonight on the show. You're not done yet, neither are we. So let's get to the Sunday preview, beginning with the first of two graded stakes for the two-year-olds and solid both ends of the uh, of the stakes double here as we start out with the boys in the uh, grade two Nashua, Blofeld, and Hebronville coming out of Futurity. Does Blofeld want a mile? I didn't think so heading into this race, but the way he ran that day, I would think he might be able to get it, especially going out of the shoe, especially the one turn. He was very game, Jay. He was kind of stuck down on the inside, then Johnny had to check him out of there, and then he re-rallied on the inside. He wasn't scared of being down there, which speaks a lot to his constitution because a lot of times two-year-olds, they don't like being kept down there. Here's the speedy El Kabir dropping out of the champagne. He looked awful the day in the champagne, and he didn't 
run well. I don't think he wants any part of going longer. He's just a very quick kind of horse. Maybe they'll have him a little bit more back on track, but he's kind of my least favorite of the big names heading in. Now, you don't get a last out graded line with first down, but you do get a horse that looked, I mean, this horse looked like an absolute beast breaking his mane at Belmont Park. And how much was he flattered by Frosty coming back a couple days ago here and just blowing that maiden special weight field away here at the big A. And first down was so professional. You don't usually see this with Tommy Albatroni first time starters. I mean, you think about three alarm fire and how well he ran. Yeah. Even first time out, he didn't even win. So this horse to win first time out takes a lot of his talent and level. Frosty got the 89 buyer breaking his maiden here a couple days ago. Perhaps he is bound for the Remsen. I would imagine a good effort in the Nashua will springboard whoever runs well into the Remsen. And what about the Phillies as we get our local prep for the Demoiselle? It's the Tempted. Todd Pletcher with the pair in the Nashua. He runs two in the Tempted. This Enchantress, I mean, she looks like a good horse. She was dominant in this Keeneland win. She was hands and feet above the rest of this field. And that was a big field at Keeneland. I don't really know how the talent level stack stacks up. We haven't seen too many next out uh, runners, but she blew them away. And the way she ran, the way she was going so easily at the end, she should be very capable of getting the extra ground. Here's your matron winner, Paula Silver Lining, got an excellent ride from Jose Ortiz, and she'll try the mile for Michelle Nevin. She's another one like Blofeld, that going into this race, uh, she just felt like an out and out sprinter, but she rated beautifully here for Jose Ortiz. It just kind of brought her back off the pace, uh, going into the turn, and then swung wide and had a lot of horse at the end. She looks like an out and out sprinter. She is half to dad's cap, so she's bred to be that way. So we'll see how she handles the mile. And here's the second impressive maiden winner running in tomorrow's Tempted Stakes. We've got Jacaranda, who broke poorly, who shuffled back and just poured it on in the mud. It's a shame we couldn't show this race from start to finish, because she broke awful. She's dragged her rider up there, clipping heels, checking, and just part of the season. Thank God they let her through, because she was so full of run. Now, if she gets another track like this tomorrow, which she might, she might be pretty dangerous. Anxious to see how she performs for my cushion. This is a weekend where it's all about the best of the best and the best stepping up to the challenges. Well, that was Andy Serling today with Britannico and the Discovery. Here he is with who to look for tomorrow. Well, it's a weekend in New York. If you know what that means, it's raining. And since it's raining, not so sure we'll be on the turf on Sunday. Hopefully we will be at least a little bit, but... If not, let's go to a dirt race and take a look at the eighth race. The eighth race features a return of Pasolini, who was last seen on a race after the Belmont Stakes on Belmont Stakes Day, and he was good in winning. He got a very good trip, but he looked good. He's disappeared now for about five months. Never a good sign and not the kind of horse I want to take at a short price. I hope he comes back, and if he comes back, he's the kind of horse could make him move forward to stake races, but I'll believe it when I see it. He's got to deal with Double Down again, who won here just the other day. He's also got to deal with Pass the Dice, who actually, since he was a private purchase, thought he ran very, very well in his last start going a mile. Doesn't really look like a sprinter, but you know what? He's run okay sprinting the way he ran last time. I'm not worried about the distance, and I think the Pass the Dice will at least offer a little bit of value in the eighth race as we try to beat Pasolini. Thanks much, Andy. I'm trying to beat Pasolini as well on a Sunday card where we have nine races on the main, the two stakes for Maggie and me. Enjoy the rest of the Breeders' Cup. We're going to go watch it ourselves and have a great Saturday night.